Well, hey neighbors, and welcome to Shed Shop Outdoors, this edition of MS441 Nightmare. I'm gonna show you exactly where I'm getting air bubbles out of this clutch side crankcase half, and I'm gonna give you just a brief bit of history while I take the chain brake apart uh, to make it easier to submerge in the water, to show you exactly how this thing is leaking and exactly how I came to figure out uh, how to test for this leak, because it's a very weird leak. If you've seen any of the videos, you might understand. And so basically, uh, thanks for all the support, neighbors. I got five saws that aren't oiling right, and I'm terrified to start them. Uh, I put a brand new oversized oiler in this MS250 for the Timber Bros, but I'm terrified to see if it's oiling right because they all seem to be oiling good until you chain them up. They oil to the bar good, and then you chain them up, and they're just not oiling right. But one of the 017s I just sent out, a local tinkerer, uh, Trent, neighbor Trent, I fixed his 017 up. I didn't feel it was oiling right. He's got it. He's cutting with it today. He says it's oiling fine. I feel like it, every time we get weird weather where the temperature goes really high and then it rains and it gets really cold, uh, during that few days, my saws just do weird stuff. And so I'm hoping it's just the atmosphere and I should have just left them to hell alone for a few days. But I got to get paid and I want to get my neighbor's stuff out of my shop because I need space. So basically, I'm going to take the chain break off right now, neighbors, uh, to make it easier to work on this and give you a little bit of history while I do that. Stick around. I promise you, I'm going to show you the air leak. Hey, and those of you that have won prizes, you've got to email me your addresses or I can't send your shit. Okay, and I'm going to give it away to somebody else in 30 days if I don't got your address. I love you, neighbors. I want to give you my free chit. I sent some free chit out already today. Uh, neighbor Lannis, good job, buddy. Your package, I dropped it off at the post office with neighbor Jan. You're good to go, neighbor. You've got your tracking and your email. Everybody else, I've got five people that have won prizes. You've got to claim them, neighbors, with your email. Okay, otherwise, like I say in the video, 30 days, neighbor. You've got 30 days to come get your chit. Uh, 30 days to let me know where to mail your free chit. Okay, neighbors, I want to mail it to you. So, neighbors, I've pulled you up a chair, and I'm just going to let you sit down with me and hang out because this is what we do with our neighbors at the shed shop. Neighbors, I realized I did you dirty. I bought a real nice tripod, and here I've got you on the flimsy tripod, but it's okay. We'll see if it works out. Okay, because now you're sitting down, and you can relax and watch me work, and we can talk about this MS441. Okay, so basically, neighbors, I'm taking the chain brake handle off to make it easier to submerge in the water and work with the vacuum pump line and everything else. And this saw, I purchased a, a 391 a long time ago, a real long time ago, like six months ago. And it was a partial, but I got it for a really good deal. And it, and it ended up needing a few parts. And... Um, it didn't have a top cover, it didn't have a carb, so I bought a brand new carb and I started gathering parts for it. Uh, knowing that if I if I just waited for the parts and didn't pay retail for them, I could make money on the saw. Well, I ended up discovering the saw had a bad uh, top end on it. Basically, I ended up buying a 391 from a, a steel dealer out in Georgia. I got it from him on eBay. It comes in, and it's a 311. And I told him, I said, neighbor, this is a 311. I sent him pictures. I said, on top of that, all the fins are broken. Now, I don't know. Hey, David, if you see this, I don't know if this guy's doing me dirty or not. But I'm going to keep buying chip from him. His 311 had a really weird hole way up inside the cylinder. And so, uh, no, not that one. I'm so sorry. Uh, he sent me another saw that had that. And now I've got another 391 from him. That's a 311. But he was, he was full disclosure um, on that one that... Uh, you know, it may be a 311, but it only had one bolt neighbors on the, on the cover. And so I'm, I'm trying to give this guy perfect love and, and say, Hey, he's, he's not doing me dirty, but even he is, I'm gonna keep buying damn saws from him. Why? I don't know neighbors. Cause I'm going to keep loving him. Damn it. And, and keep giving him a chance to get it right. But anyways, so he said, well, I had no idea. He says, I got this other 391 and I better check and see if it's a 311. And it was a 311, and damn it, he sent me that one too. I bought it from him, I think. Um, but the problem is, that one had a tiny pinhole in the cylinder wall. I mean, just the teeniest, tiniest hole that, like, had to be put there intentionally, it seems. Okay? And so, basically, that saw was bad too. Okay? And then, uh... After the very first... The very first... Um, 391 purchase on eBay. We started talking outside of eBay, and he says, Well, listen, man, I'm not like that. He says, I got this 
441 I was about to post uh, and I was gonna post it for this price and now I paid what he was gonna post it on eBay and he would have paid a lot of fees but the guy basically tells me I'll send it to you and it runs with it with it runs with a shot which means you can shoot ether or pour fuel down the carb and it fires he says I says okay he says I'll send it to you and don't pay me nothing when you get it go through it in a couple of weeks when you get a chance uh, if, if, if it's what I said it is, then you pay me. If not, fine, send the chip back. I said, okay, neighbor, it's kind of hard to argue with you on your price. That's a good way to negotiate. Tell me you're sending me the shit, and then if I like it, pay you what you want. I said, well, I can't even try and negotiate your damn price. And so I didn't. I just said, okay. He sent the saw. Uh, I, 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 I ran into a lot of problems with the saw. It had a broken head bolt, okay, and it only had one other head bolt because when I started to saw, the damn saw would start but die right away when you poured a shot. And that's normal, but a few seconds. You got to have two or three seconds of runtime. I wasn't even getting a full second out of this thing. And so I finally said, screw it, I'm rebuilding it anyways. That's what I do. And um, so I rebuilt the Durin saw. Um, I get the saw rebuilt, I start it, it's running okay. Um, but within a short amount of time, I notice it's just acting like it's got an air leak. And so I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna keep running it and see how it acts. And after, after I, I cut one stump with it and continued to cut with it, something weren't just right. And I went to go help neighbor Andy cut some firewood because his 311 that it came from this guy that he bought off of me, even though we cut with it for 20 minutes here, as soon as he put it to wood at his house, it wouldn't cut. And, and I 100% believed neighbor Andy. I said, okay, neighbor Andy, I'm on my way to your house right now, and I'll help you get your firewood cut. Because, I mean, basically we had rain coming. The guy had to get his wood cut this day. There was no other option. And so, if he's bought his shit from me, and I'm fixing his other shit, his his uh, stepdad, I believe it is, 288, um, he's got nothing else. So, I bring him a saw to borrow in the meantime, just in case I can't fix his. And and I'll bring my big saw, my 441, so that I can cut firewood with neighbor Andy. And I bring my 391, too, I think. Um, and so, I can't figure out what's wrong with his 311 right away. And I said, okay, neighbor Andy, I'm just going to have to take this back to the damn shop. I don't know what the hell's wrong with it. It's probably all these damn broken fins. It's running too hot. I told neighbor Andy, just run this damn saw until you blow it up. And so, basically, neighbors, we're almost there. We're almost to the 441, neighbors. Stick with me, please. Um, and so, I go to cut with the 441 at neighbor Andy's house. And just like his 311, as soon as I go to put it to wood, it, it don't cut right no more. It dies. Okay, and then I can't even get it to idle anymore, neighbors. I cannot get it tuned in, and I'm like, yep, 100%. This saw's got an air leak somewhere. I'm thinking, I didn't replace the crankshaft seals because they were good. Maybe one of them went bad. And so I get this all home. I back pressure test it. There's a two-minute video. I will, I promise you, I will make sure I listen to this video, and I'm telling myself right now, damn it, give them the link to the two-minute video that shows you air bubbles presenting behind this oil pump. I don't want to take the oil pump off right now because I've got it sealed, but basically, neighbors, let's get in for a close-up. Now we're at the saw, and then I'm going to show you the air bubbles. Okay, neighbors, here we are. Back here, what you've got is your oil channel, okay? Uh, I can't see the screen. I'm so sorry. There we go. That is your oil channel. Okay, neighbors, right there. That is the channel. Your oil picks up here from your oil tank, right? Whoops, something just fell out. From your oil tank, okay? See, feeds through there. Your oil tube would be hooked up there and your oil line in your tank, okay? Feeds oil to there and then your pump pumps it up to here, which in turn spits it out your channel up here on your bar and chain, okay? The problem is behind this hole, okay, which is this channel right here, okay? Up into your crank. I was presenting air leak out of that hole, that oil channel. Okay, now I'm going to go get the vacuum pressure tester to explain the rest to you. Okay, here's another half, neighbors. This one's broken down here, so I can't use it. But it's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. This is a 441 crankcase half. Okay, again, here's your oil tube, right? Oil tube feeds there. Oil channel, okay? Oil tube picks up. Oil pump pumps it into this hole, which brings it out here on your chassis, okay? This has got a guide plate on it, but the same thing. I was presenting air leak, and again, I will link the two-minute video to this. I was presenting air leak right here, air bubbles, confusing me, and I thought it was coming out this screw hole. And so I didn't have a crankcase splitter at the time, 
and I didn't want to do it with Redneck Way. You can also see the whole playlist of the Nightmare Chainsaw 441 uh, to see all of that explanation because I want to get right to it here. So basically, I thought I did end up finding on that saw crankcase bolts were loose as well. And I thought, well, that's not surprising because head bolts were loose. That's why I know this saw had been taken apart. That's why I don't know if David's doing me dirty or not out in Georgia. David, if you see this, damn it, if you're doing me dirty, just keep making it right by sending me cheap chainsaws, even though they're chitty. I'll take them for the prize, neighbor. Lots of good parts. Okay, neighbor? I want our deal to keep going, neighbor. We ain't going to quit doing business together, neighbor. Okay, back to it, neighbors. So, basically, if I had an air leak inside the tank, not the end of the world. I did have air bubbles presenting coming up out of my oil cap. See, you're blowing around, neighbors. I should have got the good tripod. Let me go get it, neighbors. You're worth it. Okay, class, for the rest of the demonstration, you're going to have to go ahead and stand up, okay? So, basically... The problem was, I present air bubbles here. Again, I will post that two-minute video for you so you can see the air bubbles when the saw is together presenting there. But when I go to test this, by sticking this thing in there and plugging my hole up here, I took me a silicone stopper and I plugged my oil channel, right? I put me a stopper in there, okay? The problem is, this was then blocking. I was no longer getting an air leak because this... Is actually blocking the channel off stuffing it down in there where the air leak has actually ended up coming from so basically I had to find a way to test through here so I've got a rubber slide you can see the videos I've got an eighth inch piece of rubber and my oil pump is just holding that rubber blocking that channel and I actually tested through here this is what's encouraging me right now the fact that I was like damn I got enough redneck skills to figure this shit out. I can't quit on these chainsaws. I can't quit neighbors. I'm going all or nothing. I'm buying a $20,000 building. I don't know what the hell I'm thinking. I can't even afford the payments. But I'm going to do it. Screw it. Because I can't work in a shed shop and I can't bring you good content unless I do it right. And I want to do it right, even if I go broke. Okay, so basically I took my vacuum pressure tester. I found me a nice big plug here. Okay. And then we're going to set this right down in the water. Okay, neighbors, that's it. Hopefully she sticks in there because I got to pump a lot of pressure to this. Let me see if it's going to stay. And there you go, neighbors. We already got air bubbles coming out. Here, I'm going to show you the air bubbles very close up. Darn it. I want to get you right on this tub. Move forward, neighbors. Look over my shoulder, neighbors. Here you go, neighbors. Okay. I'm going to get you the right view because you've got to be able to see. And I can't see my camera screen. Because of my mount. Just reach your necks out a little bit, neighbors, like a giraffe. There you go. There you go, neighbors. Just like that. Okay. Now lean in just a little bit, neighbors. You got to lean both ways, neighbors. You got to lean evenly now. Okay, watch this, neighbors. You should be able to see this no problem. Okay? Okay, you ready? Let, let all that disappear. Let the water settle. Watch, neighbors. You ready? Look, neighbors. Ah, hell. Okay, neighbors. I'm going to get a smaller container. It's going to make it easier for you. Well, for me. Okay, neighbors, yeah, yesterday the water was brown, and so it was really hard to see. Every time it rains, our well water gets brown, and uh, that's part of why the Chainsaw Redeemer started this again, because he's got to have money to fix things up, because the world is not what it should be, and no, it's not socialism, damn it, but the church should come help me, damn it, and I don't mean financially, I mean with their two damn hands. Okay, so anyways, neighbors, I didn't want to dump parts out of this tub, but I had to because I want you to really see this, okay? And I knew I should have grabbed this tub first. Let all the other stuff clear out. Just watch, neighbors. Oh, hell. Now I'm pouring water out. It's okay, neighbors. I'll make sure you see. Look, neighbors. Look at that right there. Look, there's your air bubbles, neighbors. There's your air bubbles. See them? Right there. 
right there in our crankcase. See them, neighbors? There's a micro crack somewhere in there. Now, if it was on this side, it'd be fine because oil would just be leaking into our channel already. And I don't even think it would, okay? I think it would probably work if it was in this part of the channel right here. But over here, I don't know no way to fix that. I could try and force JB Weld down into there somehow, but I don't think I want to do that. I mean, out of curiosity, if I had time and I didn't need the money for the saw, I would. But I can't put this saw back together again right now. Okay, neighbors? So there you go. There's your air leak. There's that tiny little... Look how slow those bubbles are coming out. Can you see them, neighbors? There you go, neighbors. Give you a good view here, neighbors. Make sure you're getting to see properly. Whoops, sorry, neighbors. You got to be able to see that. I can't see my whole camera screen because of the way I've had to mount it. Okay, neighbors, there you go. Right there, neighbors. Look at your air bubbles coming out, neighbors. Right there, neighbors. That, that is causing my saw not to run right. That right there. Never mind this one. Put that right inside there. Right here, neighbors. Right here. It appears this is a separate piece. Maybe it can be pressed out and repressed in. I don't know. Um, when you look on this one, you can see a divot there. But I don't think you can take that out and take it back in. This has got the bearing in it. It's leaking. It's leaking right here, neighbors. I can't see my damn computer or phone screen. Right here, neighbors. Right here. Okay, I think, here's my theory. I think somebody beat a bearing into this crankcase. I never changed the bearings on this. They were good. I didn't need to. Like even this one, it's like it's a shame. It's a shame this is bad. I don't usually reuse bearings, but this bearing is perfectly good. And this is broken. Okay. Um, and the reason where this is broken, it's right outside of where the, the mount mounts right here. The AV mount mounts right here. And so I can't use this crankcase. Okay, but that's it, neighbors. That is where the Nightmare 441 is leaking from. What do you think, neighbors? You got any suggestions? Do you have any ideas to fix that besides JB Weld and Epoxy? Because I can't put JB Weld or Epoxy on the surface right here. The problem with that is my counterweight would break it off or it would flake off and then it would seek, kill, and destroy my temple and my heart of my chainsaw, which is my top end. Okay, so I can't JB Weld this. The problem is this is an oil channel. I can't JB weld inside the oil channel because I'll restrict the oil flow. I thought about maybe putting the saw back together and dropping some JB weld down in that hole and, and, and vacuum pressing the hell out of the saw and see if it pulls through the channel, the micro crack. And I think that might work, but I don't have time to try it. What do you guys think? I'd really appreciate some likes on the videos. Uh, comment, share, subscribe, you guys. Your support is what's keeping me encouraged right now. So thank you for the motivation. I really appreciate it, neighbors. And hey, I hear the feedback that I'm saying neighbors too much. Neighbors, I'll try and work on it. Neighbors, I promise. Neighbors, okay, neighbors? I'm just kidding. I will work on it. I know I say it a lot, but in certain videos, it's to make a point. It's because I'm trying to drive a point home to love your neighbor. Okay, that's it. Okay, so I love all you neighbors. And I'll show you one more close view, neighbors. There you go, neighbors. See your bubbles? Right there, neighbors. Ah, so sorry, neighbors. Right there, neighbors. That's our leak, neighbors. That's what's seeking and killing and destroying our chainsaw. Boop. Boop. A micro crack, neighbors, that's all. A damn micro crack. Whoops. Right there, neighbors. That's called an air leak. Isn't that amazing? What are the odds?